I do have something to say. I, I um, uh, it was it was very fitting uh, at the beginning when uh, Sister Waller was saying that uh, this was the first for a lot of people. This is my first too. I've never spoken to a, a women in a women's setting like this for a church setting. So this is my first too. Amen. Amen. But when the invitation was given, I said, Lord, I'll just say yes to you. Yeah. You know, how can we say that we love the Lord if we don't obey his command? <laughs> Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey what my command. Amen. Yeah. You'll do what I say, right? Yeah. So if you don't do what he says, he's questioning your love for him. Yeah. I said, if you don't do what he says, he is questioning yeah. your love for him. Yeah. So I thank this invitation and I am so very honored to be here. If you would bow your neck, let us just speak to the Lord in the word of prayer because we want the, the word to go forth with power and to resonate in your heart. So just grab the person next to you by the hand. Father, we just come into agreement that this word will penetrate the hearts of your people this morning. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you will speak through my mouth. In the name of Jesus, to your precious people, and I thank you for it right now. Amen. 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 All right, I have a few directions when I teach. When I teach, you're going to talk a lot when I teach because I believe in the power of your words according to Proverbs 18.21. I believe that the power of life and death is in your tongue. I believe that. So while I'm teaching you, I'm going to have you say some things because I want you to declare these things over your own life because when you hear yourself declaring, you are more prone to believe it. Yes. So we're going to talk this morning, okay? Yes. I also have some scriptures to give you. I'm not going to really pause, so just drop, drop those down in your Bible and you can also uh, go back and study those later, okay? Yes. All right, so I really thank God for the... Uh, I, when um, Sister Steve told me she wanted me to come and said, what is the theme? Tell me what the ladies are, uh, uh, the thing the ladies have in their heart for the women today because I want it to be decent and I want it to be in order. So I wanted to come into agreement with what you have been speaking over your women. And the theme is uh, in women encouraging, I'm sorry, women on the move, encouraging and nurturing. Say women on the move, <laughs> encouraging <laughs> and nurturing. <laughs> So we're going to break the theme down. And the first part of the theme, it says women on the move. The definition of move is to cause something or someone to go from one place to another. Yeah, Let's say that one more time. It says to cause something or someone to go from one place to another. Luke 14.10 says, but when you are invited, take the low place. So that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Is that a good word? Is that a good word? That's Luke 14, 10. So say this with me. Where I am is not my final destination. I didn't come here to stay. I'm moving. Repeat that after me one more time. Say, where I am. I'm moving. I'm moving. Do you believe that? Yes. Yes. Jesus is inviting you to move. So you may be in an apartment right now, but you always have to remember in your mind, I didn't come here to stay. Yeah. I didn't come here to stay. God could have a condominium for you. Oh you know, you're paying right now, but God could have a condominium for you. You're moving. Never get settled in the place that you are. Always know that God has something else for you. You can have a condo right now. But, but you, you can say in your heart, you know, I'm tired of living this close to somebody. God has a house for me. I said, God has a house for you. All you have to do is say, I'm moving. Say, I'm moving. Amen. You can even be in a house. Maybe you have a two-bedroom or three-bedroom house. You moved your furniture around as much as you can, and you feel yourself stretching out. Amen? So God can have a bigger house for you. Say, where I am, I didn't come here to stay. I'm if you believe that, put your hands together. Come on, I am moving. And I can have something bigger and better for you, but it's all in your thought and what you think. If you, if you come to a place and you say, this is all I have, you know what? It'll be all you have. But I want you to always refer back to Luke 14, 10, when Jesus says, friend, come up and move to a better place. Your job that you're in right now, you never have to think in your mind that this is my final destination. If you're working right now, lift your hand. Lift your hand. 
ठीक है so the, the level that you come into that job you should never say within yourself this is it for me yes. say this is not it for me yes. if you come in on a, a lower uh, a, uh, the first level of your job you should always think I'm going to move higher because God has more for you yes. there's a manager in you yes. there's a project leader in you yes. and it's not a coincidence that you know more than your boss yes. okay I'm going to say that again and you want no more than your boss. That's because there's a boss in you. I said there's a manager in you. There's a project leader in you. But you have to know that within yourself. Say the job that I'm in now, God has more for me. Jesus said for me to come up to a better place. So I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. You have to know that within yourself. So we're still on our theme. We're still talking about our theme. Women on the move. The second um, word that's in the theme is encouraging. Say encouraging. encouraging. Say that again. Say encouraging. First Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Say build each other up. Say build each other up. That's what the word is telling us. So the definition for encourage is to give support, to give confidence, or to give hope to someone else. Yeah. Say give support, give, support. give confidence, give confidence. And, give hope. and give hope. So when I saw this definition, I know that we can give support. This is giving support here this morning. You came here to give support. For those of you that stood because you came because someone invited you, you came to give support. Amen? Yeah. Support the uh, the event and also to give hope we know we can give hope to people we can encourage them to hope again yes. and hope but really, what really uh, Paul, but I really took a pause when I looked at the, um, the uh, definition when it said to give confidence say give confidence yes. I never thought to myself that you could give your confidence away yes. have you ever thought about that how can I give my confidence away well first of all the only way you can give something to someone else is you must have it first. Yeah. Say, in order for me to give it away, I must have it. Have Say it again, in order for me to give it away, I first, I first must, have must have it. So, how do we get confidence? How do we get confidence? How do we get confidence? Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in the Lord. Amen. Repeat after me. Blessed is the one, is the one who trusts in the Lord, in whose, the Lord. Confidence whose confidence is in, is in the Lord. So what you have to always remember, ladies, is that your confidence is in the Lord. Malachi 3 and 6 says, I am the Lord and I change not. I love when God talks about himself like that. Oh, yeah. I am the Lord yeah. and I change not. So if your confidence is in the Lord, and if the Lord does not change, that would mean that your confidence should not change. I'm going to say it again. Thank you for telling me because I, I, I was going to do that. Thank you for that. If your trust is in the Lord, your confidence is in the Lord, and your your and uh, God says that He does not change, that means that your confidence should not change. Say this will be my confidence should not change. Because my confidence is in the Lord. So it doesn't matter if, uh, a lot of you ladies, I don't know if you know about this, but it doesn't matter if you have on mink eyelashes or if you just put some uh, mascara on your eyelashes from Walmart. You got some Maybelline from 549. Now, the mink eyelashes, you can get a mink, you probably didn't realize that, gentlemen, but women are now getting mink eyelashes. You know, you know the mink that you wear, the fur that you wear, the little animals, the minks? Women are now applying mink eyelashes to their eyelashes. It can cost you upwards of $500 to have mink eyelashes applied. So it doesn't matter if you have on mink eyelashes or if while you were in the, the line at Walmart, you reached over to the Maybelline counter and got some mascara from 549. It doesn't matter if your eyelashes are mink or you got 549 Maybelline mascara on your eyelashes. Your confidence should never change. I said your confidence should never change. Say that with me. My confidence should never change because my confidence is in the Lord. 
so it doesn't matter if, if you have on $1,200 Louboutins, uh, red bottom shoes. You know what red bottoms are? Y'all know what red bottoms are? Yeah, yeah. You can pay $1,200, $3,000 for your red bottom shoes because a lot of women's confidence is in their shoes. So it doesn't matter if you feel like you need to walk on your confidence or not, or if you want to pay less, got on the bottom row. Yeah, I know about pay less because I, I frequent pay less. Don't mind. Yeah, I, I shop everywhere. So it doesn't matter if you go to pay less, you know, and get your shoes on the bottom, you know, on the bottom row and pay less. That's where the sales are. You know, they have a red tag on there and say, this is the sale. So it doesn't matter if the shoes I have on the day, I bought pay $10.99 for them at pay less, or if I got red bottles on for $1,500. But my confidence is what? It's in the Lord. It's in the Lord. I said it's in the Lord. And it does not change. Because he does not change. Amen? So don't worry about that, ladies. It doesn't matter if you got your dress at Neiman Marcus or if you stopped at TJ Maxx. The Lord's direct when they mark it down. Yeah, I've watched it, you know. I, I see it, it's marked down a little. I'm going to come back next week. Yeah. Mark it down. Oh, ladies, come on, talk to me, ladies. You know what I'm talking about. Or you can go to the sales and say, hold this for me the next week. I'm going to come back with you. Mark it down. I'm going to wait till you mark it down one more time. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because my confidence is in the Lord. I don't have to wear my confidence. I don't have to walk on my confidence. My confidence is in the Lord. So it doesn't matter if you picked up a few pounds along the way. I said it doesn't matter if you picked up a few pounds along the way. It is so beyond me when people feel like they have to let you know you gain weight. Is that amazing? That's the greatest 
miracle known to men that Mary brought forth the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. She had him not ever knowing a man. That's amazing, isn't it? So you know the story of, of Mary. So Mary, uh, after um, the angel Gabriel told Mary that, he knew it would be hard for her to believe it. So after he told her, he said, you know your cousin Elizabeth? Yeah. You know Elizabeth, your cousin, the one who can't have, who couldn't have children? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they literally tattled her in the family. You know Elizabeth, the one who's old now and never had a baby. <laughs> have you ever been titled in your family? Yeah. You know, she's the one who, you know, you fill in the blanks. She's that one. So that's how I'm sure the family spoke about Elizabeth. You know Elizabeth, you know she married Zachariah. They have a kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So the angel came to, to, uh, to Mary and told her, your cousin Elizabeth, the one who was barren, uh -huh. that Elizabeth, the one who is old now, she's pregnant. <laughs> so it's amazing to me that when the Lord tells us something that we know it's going to be hard to believe, he will give you a witness. But look at the miracle your cousin is getting. So when God tells you something and then you see somebody else that is also experiencing the word that God spoke to you, don't get mad at it. Lean into it. Say, that's my confirmation. When you see that, you say, that's my confirmation. You believe in God for a house and your sister, you believe in God for a car, your sister dries up in her Bentley. Don't get mad. Say, God, that's my confirmation. It takes time to nurture. Say, it takes time, it takes time. To, nurture. to nurture. I thought this was very interesting also because, ladies, you well know that that first trimester of your pregnancy is a very, very critical time. There are some women that don't, don't even release uh, the word that they're pregnant until they get over that first trimester. Okay, wait that me if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Some women, they don't even say anything. When they tell you they're pregnant, they're already almost four months yeah. because they want to protect that miracle inside of them. Hold your belly. Stop protecting my miracle. Come on, ladies. Come on. Stop protecting it. I don't see anybody moving. I don't see anybody protecting. You better protect your miracle. You don't know what's in your belly. Put your hand on your belly, lady. I said, I don't see any hands on your belly. Come on. And I'm holding on to it. I'm protecting it. 